Good afternoon, everybody. So we continue our journey today in Turnip Innovation Festival. We have with us uh, Mr. Tapan Brahma. Uh, he's a seasoned IPR professional. He's uh, in the industry for more than 20 years in, in the field of IPR. He has more than, he has uh, experience with, you know, global patent filing and litigation. So he has a very, very specific uh, track record, very proficient in intellectual property matters. And Mr. Taman Brahma has worked with attorneys and innovators across the globe. And he's adept in identifying technologies and effectively connect the thoughts, help. Uh, so he's here to tell you very, very detailed, uh, you know, things related to patent filing in India and all the best practices you can do to basically succeed with, with your patents. So with this, I welcome uh, Mr. Tapan Brahma on the stream. Uh, thank sir, you. Welcome. Thank the you. stage is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rahul. Uh, and um, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, all the participants uh, in the session. Uh, we'll start with uh, the topic today. Uh, it's uh, you know paving the way for a good patent. So uh, paving the way means it will uh, give you better protection. And uh, the prosecution, which you know uh, that happens after the you file the patent, the patent is examined and several prosecutions happen before the final decision from the patent office. So that pro prosecution also will stay seamless and, uh, you know, flawless or less burdensome. So we'll di discuss in detail about it. So in the topic, we have uh, the agenda uh it's uh, you know we'll talk about patents and uh why patent what is patentability and prior art different criteria and in detail we'll talk about uh, claims and drawings okay so starting with as all of you know uh, more or less a patent is an exclusive right which uh you get the rights of whatever you disclose whatever you have not disclosed you are not getting the right for it. Remember it many times uh, inventors think or, you know, applicants think, uh, uh, let us let me keep secret some important information. Remember, whatever you don't disclose on the paper to the patent office, that portion is not protected. So the aim of uh, patenting is lost if you don't disclose it fully. And if, I, if you have a fear, if I disclose, people will, people will get to know about the nitty gritty of the invention. So actually the point is that is what that is why you are getting the rights in return from the government of India. I'm telling the things from Indian scenario. If you file the patents in US, you will get the rights from a government of United States of America, similarly for any other country. So whatever you disclose, you will get the rights for them only. So don't don't try to keep anything secret because you are losing uh, the most important things the, the rights of the most important part of your invention that others can easily steal and you cannot do anything to them. So, and the other thing is if you disclose more patent, it's not only for exclusive right of yours and you remember how you studied science. You, we studied science because many people had given to the society the information that we studied and we are we are doing higher studies we are developing newer and newer things because some things are there in place in the library or in the uh, uh, you know internet or anywhere to study and develop further so if we we don't disclose and we keep things secret science overall cannot develop further so uh, we'll talk about novelty. I, I, I'm telling briefly because it's a, I, I mean, we'll have a short period of time. So uh, novelty is a territorial concept. It is not a territorial concept. Novelty actually is a global concept. So when you are filing a patent in India, the rights that you'll get from Indian government is limited to the territory of India only. The rights that you'll get after your patent is granted to you, you will get the rights only within the territory of India. Indian government cannot give you rights in Pakistan. Indian government can, can't give you rights in United States of America. Okay. But when the patent is examined in the Indian patent office or any patent office, so they check whether the invention is new or not then the invention is checked from a global scenario. 
if your invention was lying in a journal in uh, Russia or Greenland or uh, Brazil, then your novelty is lost. So while, while checking uh, before filing the patent, it's very important to check whether your patent is available anywhere in the world in any form. You can see from this picture very well. So that blue circle in the middle, if middle, you are filing a patent in India. That means will, your rights, if, you, if the patent is granted, your rights will be limited to the territory of India only. But if uh, when, when patent office will examine or we examine it before filing the patent application, suppose you gave me your invention disclosure to file the patent, I will check for prior art if it is available anywhere in the world before filing the patent. That doesn't mean that I will I'll not file your patent if uh, uh, prior art is available. But rather what I'll do is I'll try to circumvent. I'll try to avoid those prior arts and draft the patent in such a way so that your patent will still be novel. But if you do it yourself, sometimes many, many people try to do it. So there are many things, many, uh, uh, I mean, you don't have a professional database that can do an effective global search. That is one thing. And second point is, uh, many times uh, people who are not in the patent field and try to file a patent or do a patent search, the patent search many times are not effective enough because sometimes the techniques of patent searching, finding the right prior art, uh, the techniques uh, you are not uh, acquainted with. So that is why sometimes you miss an important prior art and without knowing it's existing, you file the patent on the same topic and in the examination it is get cut it gets cut and you know the patent gets a lot of objections for you to respond to the patent office okay so we'll talk about the criteria of patentability all of you know uh, first of all it's a patent i mean the first criteria is the invention should be patentable okay so in indian patent act there is a section 3 and section 4 which talk about the inventions that are not patentable, okay? So second uh, requirement for patenting is a novelty, it should be new. And it should, uh, point three is it should have inventive step. Inventive step means there should be some technical advancement, which is not obvious to a person who is working in that area. Suppose you had invented, it; something else was invented, but you have invented something which is obvious over the already existing thing with a little modification. So that, that means it doesn't have sufficient inventive step. And the fourth requirement for patentability is industrial applicability. And the fifth point which I talked some time before is sufficient enablement. You should disclose it in as much detail as possible so that somebody who is working in that area can easily carry out the invention without undue experimentation. Okay, you should have disclosed the invention in that much detail. If you have not done, then it will, first of all, it may lack clarity and you may get objection from the patent office for clarity and ambiguity. Or the other, other way around, as I told earlier, whatever you have not disclosed, if patent office does not object on clarity, still, Whatever you, you have not disclosed, you are not protecting them. Okay, so as I said in the previous slide, point one, patentable subject matter. Your invention should be patentable subject matter. Okay, according to section three, there are several points, but uh, I have kept only two points for a brief overview of what kind of things are not inventions a frivolous invention that is anything contrary contrary to well established natural laws for example you will think about you will create a watch having 10 hours 10 hours that means so day is 20 hours so this this kind of inventions will not be patentable because this will disturb the whole world clock this will disturb the mangalayan launch to Mang mangal mangal planet Okay, so the so the many things will get disturbed. Okay, so that is why this, this kind of inventions are not patentable. Or you are trying to say a machine giving hundred percent efficiency, which is not possible at all. Okay, so this kind of inventions are also not patentable. This another point I have kept: a method of stealing, method of doing robbery in uh, robbery, or method of you know stealing money from ATM. So all this kind of inventions will create disorder in the public. 
okay and it's against the morality of human beings okay and it may harm to anyone so that is why this kind of inventions are not also patentable we'll talk about prior art so prior art means as i discussed uh, that uh, when uh, an invention is judged whether it's a new or novel whether it has inventive step or not then it is seen from a world perspective okay so patents in any when patent office will examine your patent application for novelty and inventive step they will check patents in any country or whole throughout the globe they'll check if any patents are available in that same field if they didn't find patents they may check for non patent literature any journal articles any web publications any news articles any conference abstracts meeting abstracts anything everything they will check to see if anywhere in the world at any point of time anything was available that tells about the same invention then they will create an objection on novelty or inventive step okay so prior art means anything just anything known to the public anywhere in the world in any form okay that is prior art so here uh, just a few examples i have kept you see uh, there are four pictures picture one you see very well you understand what it is we all know it's a camera number two you understand it's a printer number three is a cell phone or a mobile phone and number four is a water filter okay this is very very clear and first thing when we are seeing this these things are coming to our mind but let's see what this first thing also can be called the number one thing also can be called an image capturing device instead of a camera so that means you are you, you, you are covering in a broader way when you are telling an image capturing device instead of a camera image forming apparatus instead of printer a portable radio communication equipment instead of a mobile phone a decontaminating means instead of filter okay so when we are talking in this kind of terminologies so we are covering more that is one aspect second aspect is when you are conducting the prior art search for suppose you have developed a camera and you are conducting a prior art search in google or anywhere what you it it, it may not come to your mind to search this phrase image capturing device because you will think about searching camera camera lens many things you will search but image capturing device you may not search so you may miss an important prior art which is exactly same as your invention or very close to your invention which had you known there is a patent which is close to your invention you could have avoided that patent by drafting your patent application in a different way so that that prior art will not come into the picture so if you don't know this kind of terminologies are used in patents you cannot get a patent application or a journal article having this terminology okay so here i have uh, uh, brought brought in you know some examples you see this is a, these are all us patents i have taken the first uh, first patent you see it was granted in may 2018 it's a solid state image capturing element and electronic device having improved linearity from sony corporation then the next patent is canon having the word image capturing apparatus okay nikon image apparatus and lens barrel imaging apparatus so this kind of words you see they are in the title of the patent okay they are in the title of the patent so it a question might be coming to your mind okay that word that phrase is there in the title of the patent but anywhere in the patent application for example the patent abstract the claims the detailed description of the patent somewhere camera might have been used so i want to emphasize that the all these patents you can note down all any any one of these numbers the any of these patents don't have the word camera anywhere in the patent not only in the title the abstract the claims the description nowhere the word camera is there okay similarly this is another set of examples which is having the title you see from hp it's about a printer but they are using the terminology image forming apparatus image forming device or they may tell image forming means image forming image creating element 
something they may tell but they are not telling using the word printer anywhere in in the whole patent document this patent each of these patent documents may be 30 40 50 pages each but nowhere the word printer is used you see that from hp brother rico toshiba canon printers there there there, there are thousands of patents like this for example i have taken a few patents so that i can fit into the slide so so here uh, the previous uh, examples that we saw so looking in the internet to weigh the current technology and decide the way of research or decide the way of drafting your patent application is not just good enough. So you need to better have uh, the search conducted in a professional database and just having a professional database will not help unless you know that this kind of phrases, words are synonymously used for something so which a patent professional who is doing search every day can understand better than uh, a person who, who don't work in that area. That is one point. Second point is you can, while drafting your patent application, if you know this kind of words are used, you can, you can use instead of camera, you can use image capturing device. Okay. So if you put image capturing device in your patent application and claim it, you will, you will protect more because you are not just protecting your camera, but anything else which can capture the image using the lens of your invention. So when you are ready to draft some important things that I would like to tell you, understand all the details of the invention from the very beginning up to the finished product. So unless you understand each bit of it, Okay, an inventor understands it. Inventor understands from the beginning to the end of the product. But inventors, uh, sometimes because they're not working day in and day out in that uh, uh, patent uh, drafting work, they don't do. And also inventors many times are not aware of the legal aspects. They, are, they know the technical aspects, the legal aspects they may miss where you know, if you draft it on your own, sometimes you may end up with protecting less which could have been protected in a better way more broader way you make your invention so narrow so you may miss certain things so while drafting note down all the key points in your invention that solve the technical problems that give technical solutions okay so the way of giving technical solutions that only you will will you will protect so create your draft pattern draft in and around those problem solving functional points how the things are functioning to solve the problem that way of functioning only you can get the patent uh, claimed so so uh, another thing is you all of you might be knowing within one year of publishing your invention in journal you can file a patent application okay same thing also uh, uh, within one year of filing a provisional application you can file a complete application Okay, so two scenarios where the one year uh, grace period is given after publishing your journal and after filing a provisional application, you get one year period to file the patent application without harming your novel, the novelty of your invention. But many times by thinking, keeping this one year in mind, we unnecessarily delay, whereas we could have been ready much before. Suppose you filed today. And by January 2023, we have time. We, we published in a journal today or we filed a provisional application today. By 20, 2023, January, we should file the complete application. But why we'll wait until January 2023? If we can get ready by March 2022, after two months, if we get ready, let's go ahead and file the patent application. Don't unnecessarily wait because if somebody else files the same patent application in your area then it i mean he may not win he or she may not win you may win at the end but it, it will create unnecessary complications and unnecessary you have to prove to the patent office that i had filed first i had published in the journal first 
unnecessary many complications will happen. So if you can be ready much before than one year, then as soon as you are ready, file it. Don't, don't keep that one year period in mind. <clears throat> so here is an example of a claim uh, of heating element for a washing machine, which is simple in structure, compact, easy to assemble and consumes less water. This is a very poor, uh, you know, claim drafting. Okay, because you see in this whole thing, you are not telling any technical features. Why does, why you have a simple structure? Why it is compact? Why it is easy to assemble or why it consumes less uh, water? You have not told anything. So this is bringing technical problems and the advantages to the claims, which is not patentable. Okay, rather for the technical features that make the, uh, washing machine in such a way, uh, it, I mean, it makes it compact and easy to assemble, bring those points. And if you want to write the uh, technical problems that were existing in the current scenario, which you are comparing your machine with that, and you are telling mine is better. So that the, there is a place in the patent that is background art or prior art section in the patent. So there you write whatever technical problems uh, uh, were there in the current scenario, current existing technologies that required you to develop this technology. So that place is only background art. Don't write your advantage, I mean, technical, uh, you know, the advantages or technical problem related things in the claims at all. Okay. So better you write in this way, a uh, washing machine with a heating element for heating, uh, Sorry. Yeah. So you, this is uh, this is another claim example where where you know I want to say don't be very specific. A washing machine with a heating element for heating water inside the tub of the washing machine, where the heating element element is is arranged in in and adapted to the bottom of the tub. So why are you telling heating water? It can heat anything else other than water. And why are you telling it is at that heating element is attached to the bottom of the tub? You just tell adapted to the tub. Okay, so that, that way it can be fixed anywhere else. You are covering more. So don't tell water, better tell a medium. Or at best you can tell a liquid medium. Okay, and you don't tell at the bottom of the tub, but just tell tub. So it can be fixed anywhere else. If anybody else, any competitor, you, you have written at the bottom of the tub, but any competitor fixes at the top of the top, then you are losing. You cannot uh, sue him in the court because he has put it on the top of the top, the top. So unnecessarily don't be very specific. The, this is uh, a heating element for washing machine comprising. Okay, so you are writing, you see here you are emphasizing a heating element for washing machine, but rather you should say washing machine with a heating element. Because while telling washing machine with a heating element, you are becoming clear to the patent office where you are using that heating element. And there is a criteria legally which is required in the patent office that the claim must clearly define the matter for which protection is sought. Because a heating element doesn't have any specific purpose. But a washing machine with a heating element has a purpose. Identify variations and put them in description and claims. So divide the claims into broader independent claims and narrower dependent claims. Okay. All independent claim, an independent claim usually describes the invention in very general terms. Okay. So uh, dependent claims are many times tailored to fit exactly how you would expect competitors to realize the product. How, I mean, the, the independent claim will write in a broad way. But you are thinking any specific way uh, a competitor may use my product, you put it in a dependent claim. <clears throat> a washing machine with a heating element for a heating uh, for heating a medium inside the tub of the washing machine, wherein the heating element is arranged in and adapted to the tub. Claim two: the washing machine, as claimed in claim one, the wherein the heating element is glued to the inside of the tub. Where in the heat, claim three, where the heating element is attached to the inside of the tub by fastening means. Claim four, the, wash, the heating element is an integral constituent of the tub 
and has been formed in the top during the injection molding of the top itself. Okay, so you, you can write in all these possible variations so that competitors cannot enter into that area. So here, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, so you see that claim eight, the wrong wording, uh, the system of claim seven, wherein the first antenna and the second antenna are the same antenna, wherein the plurality of antennas are flat antennas, patch antennas or dipole antennas, and wherein the plurality of antennas are configured to operate in frequency bands of 900, 2.5, 5.8 gigahertz. Okay, so don't put all these things because if any, you have written three things, three different things in one claim. If any one of the things is available in the prior art, then your whole claim is gone. So rather you write those three things in three different claims. Claim eight, antenna and the second, second antenna are the same antenna. Okay, similarly, you divide them into separate, separate claims so that if any one of the claims gets rejected, so you admit to the patent office, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm deleting this claim and you please examine all, please grant all the other claims. So that will be less burdensome for you. But if you have put all those in one claim, then if that claim is rejected, you have to form new claims now or you will be in trouble because the whole claim got rejected. Unit of invention is another criteria. One patent is always one invention. Okay. So don't put many different inventions or many related in many uh, far related. If they're closely related, which you can bring into one invention, then it's fine. But if they're uh, distantly related, don't try to file in one application. But you have, if you have by chance taken the risk of knowingly, you have taken the risk, then ob if objection comes, then you delete some claims and file a divisional application or you find uh, try to convince the examiner that you know they are somewhere related to the same invention they are not different inventions so uh, for clarity uh, don't have any ambiguity in the patent application device having plurality of circuits driven by a power source comprising Okay, if I have written in this way, so which what you understand here, a device has more than one circuit and each circuit is driven by a power source or you mean a device includes more than one circuit and the device is driven by a power source, which it's not clear. So how it can be clear, you see in this example, the last one, the last green color you see, a device having plurality of circuits, each circuit driven by a power source, this is clear. It gives clarity that the circuit is circuit is each circuit is driven by a power source. Not we are not telling the device is driven by a power source. Ultimately, when the circuit is driven by a power source, the device will be ultimately driven. But you are giving clarity that exactly the power source is driving the circuit, not the device straight away. So that gives clarity and will get less objection from patent office. Abbreviations, you see that uh, you know. Abbreviations generally you use uh, many times inventors think okay it's a very reputed and uh, well known term uh, abbreviation in the industry so why not use it straight away but always a good practice is when first time in any claim or description you are starting always write the full form in bracket you write the short form that the abbreviation and later you keep on using that abbreviation okay so it is uh, advisable every after three four paragraphs once you use that uh, full form once after three four paragraphs of writing use the full form it's in bracket the short form then for three four paragraphs you keep on using that short form stick to your words okay when you are using a terminology for example you see you stick to that terminology don't change claim one you see a method of communication through a mobile communication device comprises a transducer a sensing element in claim two i'm telling the method of communication as in claim one wherein the mobile phone comprises where is mobile phone i didn't tell uh, in claim one a mobile phone rather i told a mobile communication device so use mobile communication device claim three i'm using wherein the antenna comprises i told in claim one a transducer here i'm using the word antenna Claim four, I'm telling wherein the sensor comprises. In claim one, actually, I told sensing element. So here also use sensing element. Don't tell sensor. Though they mean the same, but it creates confusion for understanding. Antecedent basis, you know very well. I'm giving a small example. I went uh, to a teacher who was teaching me in my class three. 
now i'll tell the teacher told to me i cannot tell again a teacher told to me but initially when i said i went to a teacher who was teaching me in class 3 after that the next sentence i'll tell the teacher told to me that okay so you see in the beginning i'm using a but the same thing that i have already told now i'm using the so you use a or an in the beginning when you're describing something later when you are referring the same thing you use the or said so don't make the mistake of you know later don't use a and in the beginning don't use the drawings so in the drawings uh, we have uh, you know the, the uh, numberings in the numberings are very important in the drawings you see one example here you see these are four computer keys uh, arrow keys left up down left right okay so you see in the there is a portion in the patent that is a brief description of the drawings in the brief description of the drawings we write briefly we write about the drawings later we describe in detail about the drawings but there is a section where we write briefly write about the you know titles of the drawings okay here we are telling figure 2 illustrates a group of computer keyboard arrow keys where in figure 2 is up arrow key 2b down arrow key 2c is left arrow key 2d is down arrow key okay so you understand from this picture that that red color i have kept figure 2 illustrates a group of computer keyboard arrow keys where is figure 2 mentioned in this figure you see the term terminology figure 2 figure 2 a is there 2 b is there c d are there but where is figure 2 no so this is wrong this kind of depiction is wrong because you have you should have kept figure 2 at the bottom of this whole figure then you it would have been appropriate to tell figure 2 illustrates a group of computer keyboard arrow keys so this kind of depiction is wrong this kind of depiction is wrong okay now i am showing another situation here you see at the bottom i have written figure 2 but i am missing in the description of the drawings i am missing that terminology figure 2 is a group of computer arrow keys so this is also a mistake okay I, I if i am putting figure 2 then i should describe figure 2 if i have not put figure 2 i should not describe figure 2 okay because without this also see this is if if i if i don't have that red colored things here still it is sufficient it is good okay so this is wrong and here is another scenario you see Figure 2 illustrates a group, same thing I have kept, but here figure 2 description I have given. Figure 2 have also I have mentioned at the bottom of that figure. So this is good. Okay. And the other scenario here, you see, I have not have any description of figure 2 is a group of arrow keys. I have not written that. Neither I have kept figure 2 numbering at the bottom of the figure. So this is also good. Okay. And uh, while giving drawings in the patents, many times we just take photographs of uh, uh, our device or whatever inventions in colored form and we submit it to the patent office. So what happens is in Indian patent office, actually, these colored drawings are many times accepted. But in many foreign countries, they don't accept any colored drawings unless it is very highly essential and it's not possible to depict in a black and white line drawing then then foreign country patent offices they accept color drawing but as long as it is possible to depict in a black and white color uh, line drawing then they will always expect uh, a black and white drawing so for, i advise all the people who are filing in india even if patent office in india accepts color drawings you don't give the color drawings because when after filing in india if you want to enter the same patent to a foreign country you have to redraw all the all your drawings because they don't accept it or if you submit at the time of filing this color drawings at the time of examination they will be objected and you have to submit the drawings again at the time of examination okay so color drawings no the line drawings black and white accepted and the drawings always label and these label drawings uh, you have the labelings like 100 101 101b okay all these things you see uh, claim one a honey harvesting device 100 including an artificial behave 101 you you have the labeling of all the drawings and also in your claims 
you you give for a respective things you give the numberings so that it will it will be easy to refer and easy to examine examine uh, easy to be examined by the examiner in the patent office and you'll get less objections okay so this is uh, what from me uh, today uh, thank you all of you for uh, listening uh, to the session and uh, i would uh, be happy to answer any questions that you may have thanks a lot sir thank you so much as usual very very precise presentation and that what i think people are you know looking for so very very important examples so if you have any questions you can ask already uh, from the chat so if you have patent filing related questions you can also email i can put the email here so yeah you might have understood from the uh, presentation also the that tapan sir is uh, an expert in you know with the very very precise way of filing patents and uh, yeah earlier there were some questions on novelty but i think sir you answered it with like global <laughs> that the yeah, novelty is global you have to you know great great so still we have some time if you have any questions uh, yeah so i'm i'm seeing some questions here uh uh from jagruti uh, yeah yeah how to convert a design registration into a process patent uh see i'm mean, it's a good question and interesting also uh, jagruti uh, so the point is uh, you know like design is for the ornamental aspects of the invention okay and uh, when we're telling a process patent a design you see i mean what you have designed means suppose you have designed a sari a sari you have designed a bed sheet you have designed a pen a pencil you have designed okay or you have designed the external look of a mobile phone okay the tempered glass so the functionality actually i mean uh, you just think about how uh, a sari i'm giving a plain example of a bed sheet a bed sheet what is the functionality that you have changed in the bed sheet except the look and print of the bed sheet that that you know you have made such a kind of print of the bed sheet that it's highly appealing uh, a ear ring an ornament any ornament that you have made it's very appealing but what is the functional feature that you have uh, uh, achieved any new new functional feature which is making it new so it is not possible without having any functional feature or functional technical advancement without functional and technical advancement by just having the ornamental beauty of something we cannot convert it to, into a process patent okay so only design meant for beauty and ornamental aspects but utility or process patent meant for its functionality and technical advancement okay i hope i answered your question so briefly you cannot convert the design without having any functionality you cannot convert it into process patent if it has functionality and beauty both then you can for that beauty you can protect through design the functionality you can protect through a utility patent we call it a utility patent uh, it can be a process or it can be a product also so yeah sir so there's one question how much time it will take to grant the patent after hearing and submitting the response yeah so it's a good question and it's a very really relative actually relative uh, very related really, i mean uh, depends on the you know kind of uh, uh, sometimes the load on the patent examiner uh, the patent controller in fact okay so depends on the kind of load he has how many patents he he has in hand to dispose of because after hearing we have to submit the written opinion okay so he needs uh, the controller needs to go through that written opinion and ex 
एग्जामिन इट बिफोर टेकिंग अ फाइनल डिसीजन सपोज एन कंट्रोलर इज वेरी बिजी एंड ही हैज 20 पेटेंट एप्लीकेशंस इन दिस मंथ सो प्रोबेबली इन दिस मंथ यू फॉरगेट दैट योर योर फाइनल डिसीजन विल हैपन सो इफ ही हैज फाइव पेटेंट एप्लीकेशंस यू हैव अ चांस दैट इट मे गेट अ फाइनल डिसीजन इन दिस मंथ uh did i complete the i mean all the things and another another scenario uh, i mean what are the question exactly i'm not finding it uh, yeah all... there's one question by wali uh, this question uh, is about software patents an app yeah, yeah. and uh, other than that it's thank you and yeah uh, and gorav uh, gupta has one question uh may get my app idea patented you you can do it you can do it many times we think uh, you know like uh, the software programs per se as it is it's not patentable but if a software is inbuilt in a device it is patentable so i mean if you have any anything you let me know many times it's very tricky to tell to the patent office how to protect it okay so that an a professional patent uh, person who is working in patents only can do it if you draft it on your own probably you may spoil it okay the other question uh, gorab right uh, yeah yeah gorab uh, yeah technological upgrade can it be patented Techno- if an automated detection is added to existing act uh, you you can do it you can do it if automate i mean automated detection method should be new okay and it should be doing the same thing more efficiently so that itself uh, confirms towards technical advancement so you can patent it but but as i said always it depends on the way you draft and craft the patent application okay otherwise it may get rejected great sir thank you so much uh, so uh, if you want to contact uh, tapan sir you can uh, there's uh, email here and uh, sir great thank you so much for a great session again uh, i uh, want to tell the audience that uh, uh, mr govin kedia will be conducting a q and a session in at 1 pm so uh, at lunch time you can ask all kinds of ipr questions related to even your career you know the possibilities so so you know it's a open house basically so thank you sir i really appreciate you know your talk and uh, we will see the audience uh, at the uh, 1 pm session and then after lunch thank, thank you everybody thank you all thank you all thank you all the audience uh, uh, hope to see you again okay have a good day